So I think we'll, we'll get started today. Um, I do have a young one that's trying to break down the door right now. So hopefully that's not too loud. Um, but thank you. So today, if, just make sure you're in the right place. Um, this is the uh, best practices for simple video film, uh, video filming and editing. Um, and it's gonna be led today by Cole Cullen, who is um, our media manager at WPSU. And I should introduce myself, I'm Sarah Hamilton um, with, uh, with WPSU as the education program manager. Um, so we're really excited to have you all today. Just wanna let you know that the session is recorded, is being recorded uh, and it will be posted uh, later. We'll send you an email following of when it'll be posted on our website so you can share it out um, with other educators uh, and um, also to refer back. There's been a lot of strategies, a lot of instructions. So it'll be great to, to utilize these videos in the future as well. Um, they're also gonna be at the end, please stick around. I'll be sharing out a survey at the very end uh, for those who are interested in receiving Act 48 credit and also just to really support our programs and to give us feedback on how to improve um, the program and looking at topics for future webinars. And also please, uh, I'm glad uh, everyone's kind of getting used to the chat. Feel free to put questions in the chat as we go along. Um, Cole's gonna lead us through some videos and um, some demonstrations, and then we'll have some time at the end for questions and answers. So um, I hope you have a lot of questions that we're really kind of get into really the um, specifics of, of what you're uh, interested in. And, and so you have a lot to take away. Um, so with that, I'd like to read a little short bio of Cole just to give you a whole picture and context of where he's coming from. So Cole is a Penn State alum. Um, he joined with the WPSU family in 2005 and has been creative director since 2016. He won three Mid-Atlantic Regional Emmy Awards for producing, editing, and writing a variety of WPSU documentaries. University client work includes a wide variety of colleges, including, but not limited to, Schreier Honors College, Everly College of Science, Nursing, IST, and Liberal Arts. Uh, and before joining Penn State Public Media, Colin worked on programs that aired on NBC, Fox, TLC, Court TV, and HDTV. So I, with that, I will turn it over to Cole. Um, and Cole, if you don't mind uh, spotlighting um, your video so everyone can share. I sure will. All right, there I am. Um, thank you for the introduction, Sarah. I prefer to not know, I prefer people to not know what I've done in the past. So the bar is set low. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I graduated from Penn State in 96 and just writing up my own kind of intro here, realized that in August, it'll be 25 years that I've been in this business. Uh, I got, I started working right out of school and have been working ever since. So 25 years sounds a lot, sounds like a lot. Um, and probably because it is. Um, I have been at WPSU for 16 years. And again, Sarah mentioned that I was the creative director. I've been creative director for five years. As creative director, I do a lot of work with producers and clients to help create and develop ideas in their um, in the visual story storytelling space, is, which is really what we're talking about tonight. Um, I also help the new employees on the creative end of things when they join staff, do a little bit of training and onboarding. And before I was creative director, I was a videographer. I was a videographer for 11 years here at the station. And that was mostly video editing um, and a, a little bit of shooting, but mostly editing. Um, I'm also an adjunct professor with the Belisario College of Communications. Um, I don't, don't give me too much credit though, because I've only been doing that for nine weeks. So it sounds impressive, but it's not. Um, so, and so I just want to kind of give a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, it's going to be a combination of lecture and video tutorials. Uh, the video tutorials, some of them you need to watch a couple times to really get the information from them. So I encourage you to come back to our web to our website. Um, probably in a week or so, we'll have the videos up there that you can watch and uh, really chew through some of the information. But on the other hand, I hope and think that if you just hang with us tonight, you will absolutely leave with some new information that can help you make your videos better. 
Uh, there's really a lot to making videos and I'm gonna be touching on a lot of things, but going into more depth about a handful of things. So again, hopefully you all will leave with some new knowledge. So let me share here. Somebody needs to come up with a term in this new age where we wait for people to get their Zoom act together. Okay. So video, it's that's today. Congratulations, you're here. So visual, video production is really visual storytelling at its base. Um, but what is a story? When it comes to you guys, we're gonna call, sorry, we're gonna call stories, lessons, um, lectures. It's not really, you know, the, the kind of stuff I'm assuming you all do isn't necessarily documentary or reality television or even narrative television, but more showing off what you're doing, showing examples of lessons and experiments and whatnot. So when I say story, I'm really talking about the content, the content that you will be creating on the other side in front of the camera, actually. Uh, when I start, I start any lesson with a speech about audience. Um, my first lecture in my class is about audience. Whenever I deal and talk to clients about what videos, what they want out of their video products, the first thing I ask is who's your audience? Well, you guys as educators probably can speak to audience better than I can. So I'm not gonna give you that speech. Um, if you're creating a video for kindergartners, it's obviously gonna be different of different feel, different language, different energy than if you're creating a video for high schoolers. But that's the idea. You do want to know, always keep in the back of your mind, who am I creating this content for? Who is ultimately watching it at the end? So when it comes to video production, you're really dealing with two completely different animals. You've got your creative side and your technical side. And it's really the, the art the art, the pretty stuff, the fun stuff that everyone at the end of the day sees and watches on the creative side. And then the technical side is the nuts and bolts, the boring, the sitting in a dark room, editing videos, the making sure all the settings are right on your cameras. Um, so it's really a mix of two completely different disciplines, if you ask me. Um, when it comes to you folks, it's your story and how you want to tell it. Your again, story is lessons, experiments, whatever whatever your message is, is the creative side. How are we going to share that or replicate that message for your audience? And you need to understand that these two are always in sync with each other. One affects the other and vice versa. So if you put a lot of time into your story, you also need to make sure how your story is being told matches your story, matches the energy and the content of your story. We're, this is um, production value is probably going to be the only industry term I mentioned tonight. I'm trying to shape this because you folks are my audience. I'm trying to shape this for, I'm assuming a lot of you are coming in with zero video production knowledge. If you do have some, great. Hopefully you can leave with some new additional knowledge. Uh, but when it comes to production value, it's really how good something looks, how good something sounds, how good does it appear to be? So we're really interested tonight in learning how to add production value to your work. Anyone can aim a camera at something and hit record. Let's figure out how to do it the best way. I also, really am big on keeping away from distractions. If you're teaching a lesson, you do not want any distractions from your lesson because it's the message, it's the story. That's the important part. So we are also going to work very hard on not to make distractions. So how do you add production value while eliminating distractions? That is what we're talking about tonight. And I'm gonna end one share and start another share while someone tries to come up with a term for the action that I'm doing. There we go. So this video is really, I'm going to come back and review 
a lot of the information in this video, but this is one of those that will be living on our website that I highly recommend you go back and work on or you go back and watch because hopefully there's some good stuff in here and here we go. Hello and welcome to WPSU Educational Services webinar on simple video production for teachers. We're going to give you some easy tips to help you make better, more professional videos using only a smartphone, which I'm using my phone to record this. Let's get started. These lessons will be split into two parts, one for shooting or recording and one for editing. The shooting tips can apply to any video recording you make for the rest of your life. The editing lesson will only be for editing video using an Apple iPhone. If you're an Android user, I do apologize. There are endless possibilities of creativity when it comes to shooting and editing video. For the purpose of this webinar, however, we are going to demonstrate how to shoot and edit a few very simple lessons that a teacher may want to commit to tape. All right, kids, let's practice counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. Good work. So let's get started. Obviously, when you are recording an image to video, you want the video to look good, right? The goal is to create an image that shares your message without distractions. If you are teaching a student to count to five, you don't want anything about that video to distract from the lesson. In fact, that's the first video we're going to demonstrate, a teacher simply counting to five. The content of this video is about as simple as you can get, but the execution of shooting the video took some work behind the scenes, if you will. All right, kids, let's practice counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. Good work. While setting up this shot, I paid most of my attention to three main things, camera stability, lighting, and composition. And those are the three big things you should focus on when making your own videos. Let's go through them one at a time. In my opinion, one of the easiest things you can do to make your video look at least a little professional is stabilize your camera. For this setup, I'm using a small tripod. You can get this one for about $40, but there are other cheaper options. If you are gonna make a lot of videos with your phone, spend the money for a tripod. Or at the very least, set up your phone on a stack of books. You may think you or someone else can hold your phone perfectly steady, but you can't. I also have my tripod on a stack of books. I'll explain why I did that later. Next, lighting. Good lighting is a very subtle but important way to make your videos look better. You probably don't want to spend thousands of dollars on professional video lighting equipment. So do your best with what you have. Always have your brightest light behind the camera illuminating your subject. Try to avoid using windows as background. In the case of Miss K, she is sitting in my dining room and facing the exterior windows. Also, I know that the sun is on the same side of the house as the dining room in the morning. So that's when we shot this video, so we could make the most use of the sun. Do your best to plan your video shoots when you can use sunlight. If you have to shoot at night, you can use household lights, but try to use lights that are diffused. This is as simple as using lampshades rather than bare bulbs. Be careful using lights directly overhead because they can cause unsightly shadows. 
there are also affordable options out there to help supplement your lighting. Composition. When we use the term composition in terms of video production, we're basically talking about what is in the frame of the image and how the camera is positioned to capture that image. Going back to the idea of distraction, these composition tips are intended to make your video look as normal as possible. Here are some very simple, maybe even commonsensical, ways to improve the composition of your image. Make sure the camera is level. Most of the time you can eyeball it, or look for something in the frame to use as a reference, and do your best. When recording video of a person talking, try to raise or lower your camera, so the camera is close to the same level as the subject's eyes. This feels most natural and conversational. That's why I'm using that pile of books. Rule of thirds. This concept has been around since the 1500s, no kidding. The idea is that an image is naturally divided into thirds, like a tic-tac-toe grid is overlaid on your picture. And those lines and the intersections of those lines are natural focal points for your image. Plus, the boxes make mini frames for different parts of your image. In the case of Miss K, her face falls on one line, while the numbers fall nicely inside one of those tic-tac-toe boxes. This is not a hard and fast rule, but now that you know about it, start looking for it in art, photography, TV, and film. The rule of thirds is everywhere, and if you start implementing it into your own work, your videos will naturally look a little more professional. Some quick thoughts on recording audio. When you make an audio recording, naturally, you want the environment to be as quiet as possible to avoid recording sounds you don't want in your video. For Miss Kay's video, I made sure the kids in the house were either quiet or far away. If you want to spend some money and make your audio better, you can buy a clip-on microphone that plugs right into your phone. These start at around $20 and go up from there. If you're recording narration or talking without being on camera like I'm doing now, an easy thing to do is to make your recording in a walk-in closet. The clothing helps absorb echoes. As a matter of fact, I'm recording this narration in my closet. I'm using my phone's voice memo function to make this recording. It's also a good idea to place your phone on a surface about 18 inches away from your mouth. If you hold your phone, you risk recording unwanted noises that your hands could make. You should not make your narration recordings in a room with mostly hard surfaces, like a bathroom. This can become very echoey and distracting. All right, so the key here is to make images and video that does not distract and looks as normal as possible. So that was, that was the idea with the lighting and the audio and all the tips. The next video I'm gonna show you is, it's a, a video tutorial on how to edit Miss K, one of the Miss K videos on your iPhone. Now, the, the, there are so many editing softwares out there, both on phones and both phone-based and computer-based that we kind of decided, <clears throat> we decided we should pick one and focus on it um, rather than try to, because there's enough differences between applications that it's tough to teach one and you be able to learn on others. So uh, the intent of this is really very iMovie, iPhone specific. Um, but we will, this video is about six, seven minutes long and we'll come back to some other general video things. Hello, my name is Chris and Nodell and I'll be showing you some techniques to edit video using iMovie. When you open the iMovie app, you will be prompted with a create project uh, rectangle icon. You're going to click on that and then you'll be suggested with either a movie or a trailer. You're going to select movie and that will bring you to your phone's camera roll. So scroll through that until you find the video you want, click on it, and it'll import into what we see as the timeline. To watch the video, push the play button. All right, kids, let's practice counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. Good work. Great. So that video we saw was too long. We could hear the grade at the end. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hover over the end of the clip and you'll see a yellow bar come up. And once you click on that, you can move that anywhere you want to shorten or lengthen the clip. Let's do it again on the top.
All right, kids. Great. Now let's add a title. So we're going to click on that plus button and it'll prompt us with some options. For right now, let's stick to backgrounds and it'll show us a bunch of colors we can choose. I'm going to choose this green and then it'll automatically place that into our timeline. Similarly, with the video from the beginning, we can shorten and lengthen it depending on how long we want our title to be on the screen with those yellow bars. Now let's add some text. So whenever you tap with your finger on the area you want to add text to, it'll prompt you with a couple options at the bottom. You're going to go ahead and click on the T for text, and it'll give you a bunch of different cool text font options. Um, I'm just going to click standard for now. We can change the color or the font by clicking on the double A's or this color wheel. Additionally, be sure to click on the three dots next to the color wheel under options and toggle the full clip duration. That way your text lasts the whole clip. Now let's add the numbers into the video. First, drag your video so the white line gets the end of when she finishes saying the number one. Then, in the left bottom hand corner, we're going to click the scissor icon. This is going to split the video so that it's its own little chunk. From here, we'll click on the video just like before and add a title. To move around your title or resize it, all you need to do is tap and drag to where you want it to be. Repeat this step until you're all the way to number 5. Alright kids, let's practice counting to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. Good work. When you're all finished, click done in the top left hand corner and then save it to wherever you need. This time we will learn how to add pictures in over our audio. First, we will start again with our original project, saved in our iMovie project file. Counting to five. One. So, instead of showing the number one, maybe I want to show a picture of one thing instead. First, let's click on the chunk where she says one. Then, at the bottom, we select detach. This separates our audio into a blue bar under the video. Now, let's choose a picture from our camera roll by selecting the plus sign, then selecting photos. Now we just click and drag our blue bar under the picture of the cat instead. One. Let's trim the cat's length by pulling the yellow ends in like we did in our last video. Then, tap the original video only and delete it since we don't need it anymore. Counting to five. One. The image will move at first with a built-in Ken's burn effect. To take that off, just select the clip, then tap Ken Burns Disable. One. And now you've added a picture over top of your audio. Five. One. So I have a couple, a couple follow-up thoughts. Um, first of all, the voice you heard was 
Kristen Nodell. She is actually an intern with us here at WPSU. And the job she did on that video is just fantastic. Um, that is as good as any iPhone tutorial or iMovie tutorial you'll find online. Um, it is amazing what you can do on your phone. Like I'm sounding old 25 years in the business guy here, but the fact that I can shoot and edit a video on something that's in my pocket is ridiculous. Um, the Obviously there's a lot of buttons and bells and whistles and steps to follow with that piece. And you probably didn't learn any of it. So again, come back to the website next week and play and pause, play until it gets to a step and pause and do the step on your phone and play and pause until you get to the next step. That's really the only way you'll get anywhere as far as learning the software. Um, the other thing is editing takes a long, long, long time. It Even the best, fastest editors, it takes a while. So don't get frustrated um, if you know that 15 second video of Miss K, someone who knows what they're doing, it might take them a half an hour or an hour, which is ridiculous for 17 seconds of work, but it really editing takes a while. So um, I wanna show you some different variations of the Miss K video based on the tools you just learned how to use, okay? Um, the idea here is that you learn, you know, we're giving you a couple tools and you take it into the software and try them out and then add a little spice to here and a little more flavor to here. And you can actually get a variety of different kind of cool things with very simple tips, very simple tools. Let me make sure I got the right video here. Okay. So this first one is simply Miss K counting with pictures. So this is her just with pictures. It's, it's the continuation of the lesson that Kristen just gave with the cat. All right, kids, let's practice counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. Good work. This is probably an appropriate time to explain that that's my wife. And if anyone knows my wife, don't tell her how much I actually used her in this lesson because she won't be happy. <laughs> um, this next version is instead of pictures, we're using video to illustrate the counting one to five. All right, kids, let's practice counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. Good work. Same tools, same tools, just different media, different pieces of media. It's video instead of pictures. Now this next one is a combination of pictures and titles or text or graphics. The very first thing we showed you in the edit. All right, kids, let's practice counting to five. One, cat, two, snowmen, three, pillows, four, forks, five, books. Good work. So I'm going to show you a couple more things with that piece. We actually, we also added transitions. What a transition is in editing is these fun things that go from image to image. One, cat. Like that slide. Two, snowmen. And a page turn. Three, pillows. And a four box thing. Four, forks. And a flippy dippy Five thing. I don't know what that books. thing's called. Good work. Now, when we talk about distractions, sometimes these transitions, like people, <laughs> a trick, that new editors love to do is use really what they think is cool transitions, but oftentimes they're not. Now, if this is video, if you're showing this to a, I don't know, elementary, maybe up to third, fourth, fifth grade, those they're fun, they're transitions. They're, you know, they're kind of cool. They're kind of, there's an, there's an energy there. There's a youthful energy there. But if you show this to juniors, seniors in high school, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just not, it's a little, a little too, a little too goofy, if you ask me. We also changed the fonts through here. 
one. Again, depending on your audience, different two, fonts might be snowman. fun or appropriate. Three pillows. Four forks. Five books. Good work. Just different variety with the tools that are already explained. Next thing I want to show you is a different project featuring a much less attractive person. This is an example of, you saw it early, you saw bits of this in the first video. Um, this is, um, well, let me play it for you, then we'll talk about it. So obviously those are two, two different videos with the same content. It's the exact same experiment. If you want to call it experiment, demonstration, whatever, however you want to call it. But this one is one single shot. And this one is multiple shots and there's music and it's fun and it kind of moves. So I just want to kind of give you a quick explanation of how we do that kind of, that kind of production. So, and this might be common sense or it might not, but that final video is actually a collection of four different videos edited together. And all of these videos are following the same rules that we taught you, that I showed you in the first tutorial. There's the lighting. The lighting is behind the camera. The camera is stable. It's on a tripod, same tripod as Miss K. I'm trying to use the rule of thirds. So we're following all the shooting rules, but this is more of an editing kind of thing. So I'll just play this and kind of talk you through as we're watching it. This is called the master shot. This is, and this is, this is how films are made in real life too. Not that this is in real life, um, but you start with a wide shot of the action of the whole process in one take. I mean, when you're a professional, you can do it in one take. Clearly, I'm a professional arrow drawer here. And I've, I've thought ahead, like I know what angles I want to shoot to help edit together, like this glass. I know I just need one quick shot of me putting the glass down. Boom, there it is. Same thing with the close up of the arrow. So I'm making sure to repeat the entire action. I put my hands on my lap as if I just sat down. And that arrow is not good enough for me. So I'm going to try it again. This is multiple takes. Again, films, films and TV, they do hundreds, dozens, if not hundreds. And I followed the action and pretended to hold it up to the camera. Glass, this is the fourth shot. And I repeat all the action. Now this is acting. I don't know if you noticed, but I did not take the cap off the marker or draw an arrow. 
but it looks like I did. <laughs> Pretend to draw, repeat the action. I didn't like the action, so I did it again. So, I mean, this is, like I said, it's kind of common sense, but this is a, a, a simple way to make a simple illustration just a little more dynamic, a little more interesting for your audience. And then the final project, final edit again. I took out the music and all the audio. This is really, really, um, this is a, a real professional technique, but like I'm, I'm editing in the middle of the action. I cut the shot. It just makes the edit look a little more natural. Same thing here. I reach and I start the motion in one shot and finish the motion in another shot. It just makes edits a little more seamless. These are pretty advanced editing techniques, but the idea of shooting the same action, three, four different angles, three or four different times, and, and, and editing and edit editing them <laughs> together, pretty simple thing. Today, we are going to be working with something called match action. This is when we make certain cuts in our video to other footage to make it seamless. To shoot this, you are going to want to take multiple videos of the same thing at different angles. Let's get started. First, open a new project. I would recommend starting with your farthest zoomed out video, the wide shot, where you can see the complete action. Let's clean up the beginning and ends with our yellow bars to make it shorter. Next, scroll through this clip until you land just before he's about to draw the arrow and click split. This separates our video where we want to add the closer up footage. Let's click the plus sign to add our next piece of footage the close-up drawing of the arrow. Now, we will scrub through this piece of footage until about when he's going to draw the arrow. Put those two clips, wide shot and close-up, next to each other and watch how easily it fits together. Delete any other part of the clip you didn't use. You can choose to change the transition to a dissolve if you'd like to stylize it more. We are going to do this a couple more times. So, for this next action, we want to cut just as he's pulling up that arrow card back to the original wide shot. So we'll scrub until we are at the point of action, split, then delete what we don't need. Now one last time, let's cut as he's bringing the arrow to the water glass for another close-up. Split just at the action, add in your next clip, scrub to the action on that footage, split and delete. Finally, one more split and back to our first wide clip, and we are done.
So I, I want to go back and just review a few more. Uh, I want to review a few of the techniques I showed you in the first video. Full disclosure, I wanted to do this after I showed you the first video before I went on to the next videos, but you know. Um, camera stability, lighting, and composition. Those are the three biggies. They're simple to do. They make your videos look so much better. Now, if you decide, if you are, let's say you're doing a tour of, a, I don't know, your classroom or something, and you want to hold your camera and walk and do, do the selfie thing, I would recommend there is there are tools you can purchase to help with this. This is a, I, I don't exactly know what this is called, but it's a stabilizer for your camera. It's probably 60, 70 bucks. You could do the selfie stick thing, but that is, those are hard to hold, hold still, but it's a look, it's a feel if you want to try to recreate. When it comes to lighting, there's also money you can buy. Ring lights are all the rage now for Zoom meetings because they're perfect for Zoom meetings, but they're not very versatile for other things. I would have had a hard time using the ring light for the close-up of the glass, for example. But you can get panel lights. You could call you'd call these panel lights, and these are probably 60, 70 bucks starting. But again, the the better you want, the more money you can spend for sure. I just want to reinforce the idea of making sure your light is in front of you, not behind you. I'm sure, I mean, I'm looking at Sarah right now and she has a, a window behind her, but that's okay because her face is nice and illuminated and we can see her face. That's a, It's all good, but try to avoid setting up in front of windows. People just think, oh, windows are pretty. Yeah, but they do bad things for your camera. I just want to give, give a little more time. Oh, and this is my son too. I should also point out that uh, this is Bailey. Um, I want to give you some more time to really take in the difference between what's called soft light and hard light. Soft light is diffused with the lampshades, for example. You can use other, there are tools you can purchase if you want softer light. But on the left, he's squinting. He's also making a terrible face because for some reason he doesn't want to smile for his dad. Um, hard shadows. What I mean by that is you can see, you know, he's got some hard shadows here, hard shadow under his throat. It, and, and washed out skin tone, his skin is just kind of ghosty. It's just kind of white. Whereas over here, the shadows are much softer. It's much more comfortable for the person in front of the camera. And the skin tone just feels a little more natural. And again, this is the overhead lighting. You think because you have light in your face, it looks good. But if the light is in the wrong place, you could have some nasty shadows. Um, when it comes to composition, I'm using these three rules right now. And I recommend that you folks do when you're on Zoom calls as well. My, cam my camera's level, obviously, that's pretty easy to do with a laptop. But the rule of thirds, you know, my eyes are right here, third of the way up. And my eye line, I actually raised my computer. So my eyes were a little more direct on the camera. As a matter of fact, that's, my, that's what my setup looks like right now. I've got the hand sanitizer right there because I'm in the office, but I raised the laptop laptop up to get my camera at a nice angle. And I have a little light here too, just to give my face just a little, just a little something. Um, I talked about iMovie a little before, but there are other plenty of other things you can um, software you can use to edit. Um, I like uh, the, the Adobe Creative Suite is expensive if you buy it, but a lot of schools buy the license and teachers can use it for free. I know um, Penn State does that. So if you want to get into, if you want to go beyond editing on your phone, which I recommend because editing on your phone is kind of tough, um, look into Adobe. Uh, there are free, there is free software out there, but you get what you pay for when it comes to editing. There is, you can get things edited, but it might take you a long time. The final product may not be great. Um, so, you know, do some research to find what software will work for you. Couple just big picture thoughts to wrap it up. Um, music rights, 
you you can't just take the Beatles and throw them in your video and not get in trouble. Now, if you have it, if you're making videos just to show in your classroom and it's never going to get anywhere else, is anyone going to know? Probably not. But if you use copywritten music and put it on YouTube or wherever, YouTube will find it and take the video down. Um, there are free video, it's called royalty free music. There are websites out there where you can get free music um, or cheap music. Sometimes it's $5 for a song that you can use for whatever. Um, and maybe you have to give the artist credit at the end of the video, but it's worth it for good music. The, I already talked about the Adobe Suite and clothing, it's like a simple thing, but this shirt I'm wearing tonight is the worst thing I could wear because it's small patterns. When you're on camera, you want to be wearing solid colors or big patterns. You, you want to stay away from small patterns. And that is, I believe, yeah. So that is the end of my presentation. If you, there's one thing you remember, it's to not wear shirts with a lot of patterns on. And then my job here is done. <laughs> So I guess I'm happy to take questions, Sarah, if you want to. Yeah, thank you so much, Cole. That was that was great. And it's definitely um, a great overview and it'll be helpful to look back on it too. Um, are there any, any questions? Feel free to put it in the chat. Um, you can unmute yourself. Um, there was one comment. I didn't want to distract you while you're going, but Peter uh, suggested the term Zoom fuddling as Zoom okay. fuddling. Can you spell that, please? Zoom fuddling around. F-U-D-D-L-I-N-G. So two Ds. Okay, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag, right someone needs to uh, copyright that quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, so while everyone kind of kind of absorbs information, think about how you um, plan to use this. Any, any questions? Um, uh, everyone's saying thank you. Oh, recommendations for microphones. Um, I I don't have a specific one to recommend. Um, it's really with this kind of, with any video equipment, the more you pay, the better you get. So any kind, if you can control your environment like I did in the closet, my voice actually sounds pretty good in that recording. Um, so a microphone will get you a little better, but if you spend a lot of time controlling your environment, and be in a dead room, you kind of don't need a microphone. But if you do want to get a microphone, the more you spend, the better it's going to be. So sorry, I don't have like a brand to recommend. Um, and uh, actually, Chuck uh, raised his hand. So um... yeah, I joined a little late. I was just wondering, um, um, did Cole indicate that this would be, this is being recorded and I'd be able to reference it again later? Because it looks like a few people are actually recording it. Uh, it should just be on ours, but yeah, we'll record it and then we'll share it on our. Um, it'll just on be on the. It'll just be on the site. Yep, and I'll um, we'll send out a message afterwards of when. Oh, when okay, great. Thank you. Much appreciated, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and then a couple other questions: Is there um, a way to remove the controls from video in the replay? So the stop and pause buttons. I'm guessing. Kathy, if you want to chime in or, or add to that, um, yeah, is, that the story, is that when um, she asked if there's a way to remove the controls from video in the replay, so the stop pause buttons. All right, I guess when I was looking at the ones that you showed, I could see the controls at the very bottom of the screen. I'm not sure if it's just because of what you were doing or did they actually show up on screen? Yes, uh, most uh, video like QuickTime, for example, I was playing videos through QuickTime, most of them will have kind of the play button float over the screen for a few seconds. And if your mouse is too close, it won't go away. But generally, if you just kind of get your mouse out of the way, the play button will go away. I don't know if there's a way to keep the play button from showing up at all or not. That's a good question. Sorry, I don't have an answer for that one either. All right, thanks. Have to Google one later. Um, another question, if we're using a laptop camera, is it really worth it to buy a separate camera? Yes. Will my video look a lot better? Yeah. Yeah, the laptop cameras, unless you want, 
I mean, even the camera on a phone is better than a newer phone is better than the camera on the laptop because the thing that the laptop camera and the microphone, the laptop microphone are designed to capture only this. Okay. Now, even if I'm, if I'm all the way back here, the camera and the audio is not nearly as good because it's designed just to capture this bubble around the laptop. Uh, I've done things where I've tried, I do, I work part-time for my church um, doing video things. And early on in the pandemic, we tried to like show the service using a laptop camera and it was a dismal failure. So I, I try your best not to do anything with your laptop camera other than only this. Um, and kind of along that line, actually. So I'm guessing you are, are you currently using your laptop mic? Yes. Okay. Yep. Good to know. Um, and then how do you overlay a recorded audio onto separate video clips? That, um, that would have to be something we show in the tutorial. Um, the, um, <laughs> I don't, I can't explain it. I will say that uh, whenever we post these videos, I didn't mention this earlier, there will be an additional editing tutorial on how to edit the Mr. C refraction project, which will include adding music, which is what I'm, you know, which is another piece of audio that you're adding to video. So while I can't answer that question now, uh, the question will be answered sometime on our website, sorry. It's great and thank you all for your questions. That was where um, some great questions uh, helps to elaborate a little bit more. Um, and I just have a couple of questions too, just in general. Um, I know it seems like you, you took some planning and some prep <clears throat> to make those videos. Do you have some tips on preparing to record a video? It's really, um, I mean, the way we work in the professional field is we put a lot of work into what's called pre-production, which is all the work that goes into before you hit record. And it really translates into how much time is spent in production, which is when you're recording, or post-production, which is when you're editing. So um, I don't have tips other than to just say you can't be too prepared. Um, oftentimes, even perfect example is when I'm standing in my closet recording the voice the voiceover or the narration for this video, I thought, oh, I'll just go in and wing it. And I can't, like, I have to take the time to type it out and make sure the words on the page make sense. And I'll read them out loud as I'm typing them and make sure they make sense before I go into the closet to record. Um, because it's just, your, your brain is worried about other things. So you wanna try to eliminate as, as many decisions that need to be made while recording that you can before you start recording. So it's really prepare as much as you think you can really. That's great. Um, <clears throat> and I know a lot of the teachers uh, on here um, are, are really focusing on, on the videotaping of, of what you can share with your students, but I know some of you probably have students that um, might be interested in this or um, uh, thinking about this pathway. So I, I'm interested in Cole to hear kind of um, as a student, kind of what got you into, into this interest? Where What kind of sparked your interest in this and, and took you down that career path? <laughs> I started at Penn State as an undeclared major and I didn't know what I wanted and I watched a lot of TV and I was told you should go into TV production. So I did <laughs> and it worked out. <laughs> um, I, I, after I graduated, I did a few months in local news where I was a, where I was a shooter. Then I worked as a video producer in a company actually here in State College, Canon Instrument Company. I was, uh, they would create equipment that was um, lab equipment to measure viscosity of asphalt binders, I know, and very exciting. And, um, but they would send a training video along with their, with their equipment. And I was the training video guy. I wrote the scripts, I shot them, I edited them, edited them and did that for a few years and then followed the young lady in the video to the Allentown area and had a couple editing uh, jobs out there in Allentown and Philly for a variety of different television programs. And then came back to WPSU because honestly, we just wanted, we like this area and we wanted to be back in the central PA. 
and that was 16 years ago and I'm still here. So, but yeah, there was never an inspir. There was never like, I was never inspired to get into this career. I fortunately I landed in something that I like because I'm, I'm a creator, I'm a maker. I love to make things. And like, I had so much fun making this video <laughs> because it's just, it's fun to make stuff. So I was, I, I, I was advised well <laughs> early yeah. on. That's great. Follow the interests. Um, and then one other question, which um, I think you mentioned, is someone asked, do you, so you recommend scripts? Well, so I didn't want to push scripts too much with this group because you guys are, are the pros at standing in front of a group of people and making them listen to you and learn from you. So if you need a script to do that, then sure. I mean, it, it's really whatever you're most comfortable, if you are the person on camera, for example, if whatever you're most comfortable doing, um, scripts sometimes can feel a little rehearsed. Um, for example, well, it's kind of script related, but like if I'm doing an interview, if I'm going to interview someone and they ask me for the questions first, I don't tell them because I want natural. I want natural reaction. I want natural conversation. So if you are giving a lesson, I'm sure you don't, I'm not sure, but you probably don't stand in front of a classroom with a script. You probably, maybe you have bullet points and you riff off the bullet points. And, you know, I would do the same thing in front of the camera. Or if you, you know, if you get nervous in front of the camera, like I actually do, maybe you need a little more than bullet points just to fall back on in case you, you know, kind of lose your focus. So it really depends on the project. This was, this was a tough lesson to prepare just because uh, the breadth of what you folks want to have at the end of your production is so broad. So, you know, I didn't, I, I can't say yes or no to scripts because I don't know what the project is. That's great. Um, well, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to put in the chat. Um, so I mentioned that the webinar will be available on the website. Um, I'll send it out in, a, in an email follow up, but just so you have it and, and so you can explore the other uh, professional development workshops that are available there that are upcoming. Um, and just so you can explore learning at home uh, activities, please visit that. Um, and I do want to save a couple minutes so we can we can take time and fill out um, this evaluation form that I just put in there. So this, if you are in um, looking for Act 48 credit, uh, we need you to fill out that form that I just put in there. Um, and, and if you aren't, we still would love you to fill out that form to again, just give us feedback um, and to see what topics that you're interested in. So um, please click on that and fill that out. Um, and I think you should have my email. I'll put it in here as well. If you have any questions, follow up, anything like that. Um, a lot of thank yous. Thank you. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, thank you all for, for joining us tonight and, and thanks so much, Cole, for sharing your expertise. You all, bet. Right. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody.